Hey, I'm back. I just had to uh, duck off for an hour. We had the horse lady come to uh, give our horse a grease and oil change and a full service, so to speak. And uh, yeah, we're back into it. So uh, in the meantime, while I was waiting for her to do all that stuff that she does, I um, made part two and, and hosted it on the net. So you guys should, if you're interested, it's up there now. And now we are moving on to you. part three, I guess. So we're just having a little bit of a feel here. I'm not sort of going to. I'm not going to sort of uh, sign off on this just yet. I just want to just make sure that it's clipping in nice. There we go. Yeah. All right. So let's go into the new bearing, nice. All right. So let's put our little uh, retainer in there for the seal. Geez, these are a bulletproof motor, these TDR 250s. They really are. Um, I guess it's hindsight now, but you know, they, they had the basis of a, of a class leader in the air-cooled, you know, 250 uh, four-stroke. And, and in some ways, they were, they were better than the XRs. Um, and I'll rattle a few off straight off the top of my head. Front forks uh, in the later model, you know, the blue TDRs. This is not the early steel tank, but the blue TDRs, I guess in Australia, we had the blues from about 90, 97 or something, 98 onwards or something. <coughs> um, yeah, amazing. They had great forks, really, really good fork, front forks. A lot better than the, uh, than the CRs. In actual fact, one of our local racing legends Jeff Ballards of uh, XRs only here in Australia. He, uh, yeah, he used the he used the um, the TDR forks on his XR 280 race bike. So yeah, get that up, yes. Fiddly little bastard, aren't they? Always are these little things. Always are a fiddly little bastard. There we go. There. Do it. Do it to get into position. Silence going always inside. There we go. Silence stays divine. This doesn't sit into position properly until we get the push rod in, which is now. Up on his little stand there, keep the shafts off the off the workbench, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's drop it in. One thing I always check for is on your clutch push rods: um, is any wear just on the end where it goes into the activator? Uh, on the other end here, where the little ball bearing runs, it's always normal to see a little bit of an indentation there. That's normal, that's fine. So when you locate those, you drop those in, have a look down the inside until you see, until you see or feel the actual push rod doing its job. And as you can see, it's, it's moving, moving it up and down so we know that it's, we know that it's located. Ball bearing in, bang, there we go. All right, and the other thing, I wanted to talk about as well is screens a lot of motorbikes will have a screen uh, where the oil pump pickup comes from which is on the TDRs right here at the bottom and this goes in here like this um, see uh, XRs have them as well it's so overlooked so overlooked with people's maintenance um, you know, especially with bikes that have got uh, inbuilt, well, they've got cartridge filters, so overlooked. So that people just think, oh, you know, I've just changed the filter, it's going to be fine. Um, not the case. I have done many rebuilds where uh, I've found pieces in there, uh, and also many piece, many uh, cases where if you wipe your finger 
in the bottom you'll find like a grey met metallic paste. And this is even though you've had a great uh, maintenance schedule and you've been changing your filters religiously, it just happens. That's just wear and tear. So what I'm saying is every now and then, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, it's not every time you do an oil change, but maybe, you know, every seven or eight or something like that, or whenever you're doing major work, always pull this out, inspect it. I always lean the bike over onto the side where the screen is and get in there with a toothbrush and, and, um, and, and rag and wipe it all out and then give it a spray with brake cleaner so everything just runs out of it again. You're just helping your motor because uh, nothing like that, that's not going to stop um, metallic paste going through your oil pump. All it does is stops big chunks and stuff. So it's you need to just remember that's a maintenance point there as well. Okay, I was going to not film this, but I just got asked, how do you fold the little tab washer on your clutch and on the end of your, you know, your counter shaft and, all, and your main shaft and all that? Stuff. How do you mechanics do that? Um, well, we struggle the same as what you guys do. They're a bastard. They work, but they're a dead set fucking bastard. You just got to get something in there, prize it up and then get a, a bit tougher screwdriver. Just prise it up. This is the sort of thing you don't see done in a workshop when the customer's standing around. Because they go, fuck, I could do that. Um, when you got it up enough, you gotta grab your little drift and, uh, just, yeah, just, just drift in the back. And it's not, it's not a bloody, it's not a technical process by any means, and it is a bastard. Right, I need to go more on that, because it's just not wanting to fold up. So we go to the, the big screwdriver, a bit more leverage. Now yeah, we're talking about it. Um, I always like, and, and I, you know, this is a personal thing, um, I always like to fold more than just one tab up. Uh, look, I've, I guess from the factory, they, they most bikes will just come with one folded up. I just know that when I build a bike for a customer, I don't want that point to fail, so I fold, I fold both if they've got both. And then I can sort of, then I know that hey, it's going to be a, it's going to be okay going out. Because, you know, it's my red, it's my reputation here. Yeah. Boy, that's been a little bastard. Anyway, they always are. So there we go, folks. Absolutely no, no tricks I can help you with that. Other than just do the best you can. So we've got both done. We've got a little ball bearing dropped in there. Plates are all lined up. Okay, let's drop her in. Sits down nice. One more check I like to do again is grab hold of your lever and let's see that activate. Yep, that's doing what we want it to do. Alrighty folks, it's time to get rid of the old TTR 250 springs and put in the heavier ones. <coughs> and this is uh, this will make for a heavier clutch feel as well, but there's nothing we can really do about that, I guess, without going to a to a more expensive clutch setup. Let's have a look at these little EBC ones. All right, so we've got sort of a basic same length, uh, probably about the same sort of diameter. Um, you wouldn't be able to feel the difference in your fingers unless it was astronomical, but uh, anyway. This is what we recommend and this is what works. And obviously with the EBC, we get a spare don't stress. It is a spare you don't need it. Okay, next point. These are another point where I see a lot of damage done from uh, people just having a crack at it at home. You don't need Loctite on the thread. The thread has got 
pressure coming against it from the spring, so it's just like a spring washer. It doesn't need anything other than just being screwed in and the springs will do the rest. Now I've seen so many people that have snapped these things off. I've seen snap lugs, I've seen snap bolts in there. Um, you don't need to do these tight folks. It's the tightness, um, it's just, it doesn't, it's not about the tightness of the bolt, it's the spring that does the work. 10, I think, 10 Newton meters for most. I mean, just check your own, your manuals in whatever specific motor, but pretty much 90% of, of this, stim, this similar style of clutch, it'll be around that 10 Newton meters. Uh, it's only a six mil bolt, but it's not a high tensile bolt. It's just a, it's just something to hold some pressure on the clutch. And uh, if you're not sure how to tighten it, how tight to go, there is one way of doing it. You know that um, tension wrench I told you guys you needed to go and buy and you raced out and you bought it? Yeah? Well here, here we go. What have we got to set? Oh look at that, set at 10 Newton meters. I must have had that pre-ready to go. What's going on? Bang. Bang. That gives you an idea how tight they need to be. I'm, I'm holding this clutch basket with my own hand. And um, it's fine. Yep. Now, some people at this stage will put the uh, side cover back on. And uh, to be honest, I think we'll do the same. Um, so before we do, we've got a little a little rubber there. We just got to make sure it's all nice. Some, sometimes if it's any damage on that, on this, this is a Yamaha only specific thing. Any damage, replace it. That's an oil feed up through your cases. Um, oh, and this is something we want to talk about. Okay, I haven't cleaned this up or prepped this or anything yet, so I'm not going to install it. I'm just going to show you. Here's the uh, Yamaha clutch cover. Um, here's the, uh, the pop-off valve or the pressure valve, one-way valve for the oil pump. You see that little seal there? Yep, that bloke there. That little fella there runs on the outside of the crank, just there. And that's what feeds oil straight through and squirts into your conrod. So whenever I'm doing a rebuild, I always replace that. Because, you know, you tell me what happens if you don't get oil on your conrod. So that's one thing, that's something I always do. It's just a safety precaution. And this seal looks fine. It doesn't look anything wrong with it, but I'm not taking the chance. Because as I said, whenever I build a motor, we build it to last. And uh, you do it right the first time, and then you don't get in trouble with anything. So it's a good motto to have. All right, so I'm going to clean this up, and then we'll um, we'll put it on. Hobby knife, like two bucks on eBay. Yep, I love it. I've got the snap-on gasket scraper. I've got that. I've got cheap ones. I've got good ones, mate. Hobby knife. Yes, you've got to replace blades because they blunt up. But um, who cares? They work and they work good. Take the fingers out of the road. Crikey. Anyway, funny little story. My mate, he... Uh, He's got a four-cylinder Suzuki road bike, carbureted. This is the mate that doesn't know anything about motors. And um, I'm not going to tell you who he is. He knows who he is. And uh, anyway, doesn't ride that often. He's got his battery charger, triple charger on the on the bike, and it keeps it charged. Every three or four months, I ring him up and I say, "You're in that bike yet?" Nah. Nah, 
I said, why not? He said, oh, I haven't had time or whatever. And I said, mate, honestly, if you don't ride this thing, you're going to get fuel gum up in the carbies. Uh, and then we're going to have to you know, take it to a bike shop, me, um, and we're going to have to pull the carburetors out and the it's going to be a major ordeal, and if I can't get there and if you can't get it to me, you're going to have to pay your local bloke. He doesn't live close to me, or anything, but uh, you'll have to pay your local bloke to get it done. It's going to be a major expense. And I can tell you, on that particular model of Suzuki, it's an absolute crack of a job. Especially just to get them undressed. Anyway, guess what? Exactly what happened. Fuel gums up in it won't run, takes it to the bike shop, gets charged 800 bucks, gets it fixed, told you so, and um, that would have, you don't actually need to ride them a great distance, you just need to let a bit of fresh fuel go through, that's all you want, just to drag that little bit of gummy crap through and just keep it running, of course with injected bikes we don't sort of seem to have that much of an issue with that, but it's still, it's relevant. Yeah, I'll just break my own car cardinal rule. Um, don't clean up where you're doing an engine build, so you just see me cleaning up, scraping the gasket and cleaning up this uh, clutch cover. And it goes against my rule. You clean up all your parts, put them aside, and then you build. It's not a bad rule. Anyway, so we're going to replace that seal that I was just telling you about before, one that runs on the crankshaft. And I guess it gives you a bit of an indication on how important this seal is, the fact that it's Loctited in with probably what feels like medium Loctite. So, of course, Yamaha intended for this to not want to come out in a hurry. How do you get a seal out? Well, if you don't care for the seal too much, you just get a screwdriver like this and pick him out. Boom, baby, way it goes. Right, so you just make sure that. Oh, and when you do that, you don't push it in all the way till it hits the cases and then scratches the living daylights out of cases on the way through. We try and avoid that, just not quite that much pressure. Alrighty, so we've got our new seal here, which I already know is the correct one, because I checked, just like you guys check. So, we could use, we could use our new, like, new seal, we could use a, uh, the back of a socket, like that, find the right size, or if you've got seal drivers, you can use your seal drivers, um, which I have. Actually, I'm not going to use the seal drivers. I went to all that trouble just to grab a man. We're not going to. I'm actually going to. We're just going to do it. We're just going to do it with the with the socket. So you guys, not everyone has seal drivers. So the way we do this, we want to make sure that it's just a fraction, just a fraction smaller. Not much. We don't want to damage that inside. A little bit of oil. Just make sure it's got a little bit of oil. Just there. Let's just try and get a nice little firm start. And then, nice and gentle. Try and tap him in square. And you'll hear it hit home. I can hit home there now. If you're pushing in a big seal and you've got a big socket, it's, 
um, very hard to hit a big socket squarely so you can then put you know you can put that in back to front and that becomes your tapping point or you can just buy a, a seal driver set if you want to yeah all right so we're going to um, put some loctite back on this now and get it back into position and and lock it in because as we said we definitely don't want this coming out so I'll just grab some Loctite and we'll lock it in.